HH Holmes is a creep, yo. It's a creep. I am definitely gonna have to sage after this one today. That's all I'm gonna say. Also, my dogs are in here, and I hope to God they can just chill. Can you chill? Can everybody just chill? Theo says he is going to do everything in his power to chill. You gonna chill? Hmm? I know, all these lights? Wow, it's crazy, huh? Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. So just as a heads up, FYI, I thought I was nice and polite talking about Ed Gein. Clearly he didn't like what I had to say because he gave me a horrible nightmare the same day that I filmed it. Um, I didn't uh, sage that night and I should have. I should have saged. Um, usually... <sighs> This is my corgi wiener. He's a mixed breed. He was found on the street and we adopt, I adopted him like, I think about six months after he was found. He just gets, <laughs> I say he gets a chip on his shoulder sometimes because he was a street dog. So sometimes he just gets, <laughs> he just gets crappy. Odie, mama's trying to work. Can you let mama work? Say hi to everybody. Say you're YouTube famous. Yeah, can you be good boy and let mama work? I should have saged, didn't sage. Ed Gein gave me nightmares all night. I had this nightmare and it was reoccurring all night. Basically I'd fall asleep and I'd go into that. <sighs> Odie, stop it. Um, I would have nightmares all night about um, some, like a shadow man without a face, which Ed Gein was known for, you know, his horrible crimes. And the shadow man was standing on top of me trying to get me to like stop breathing. And in the dream, I thought it was working and he would like jump off and run. And I was like combative in the dream. Like I wanted to fight him in the dream. Are you done? Okay, now it's your turn to say hi. Okay, this is princess. Say hi to everybody. This is my chihuahua. Um, hi princess. Yes, you're a good girl. Yeah, uh, my name is princess. My ears get back because I get anxiety sometimes. Oh, the lights just dimmered. We're gonna have to sage. We're gonna have to sage. We're gonna have to sage that. Bad dreams and nightmares. Let's just not, let's not replay that. So I'll be saging after this video. So today I'm going to um, share another sinister serial killer. What's with me and dark stuff? I mean, then again, my whole like life is surrounded by living in a dark room. What was that? I hope I caught that on audio. So I have a lot of different products since I'm going to be talking about H.H. Holmes, the serial killer today. Um, I don't know, this kind of just stuck out to me, the Kat Von D um, Cathedral palette. Um, this did come out a while ago. Um, if you've never seen it, let me show you guys what it looks like. This is the Cathedral palette. I've used it quite a bit. You can kind of see from where I've dipped in. Um, as a backup though, because there's not a ton of... Um, shades I'm like completely, completely sold on in this. It was kind of a mixed bag. I also have her other palette, which is the Fetish palette. I don't know if you guys have seen this either. Both of them sold out pretty quickly. This is the Fetish palette. And um, I will say the consistency of the shadows in the Cathedral palette are better. These tend to be a little bit more chalky or um, definitely fall out, but I do like that these are like my my dark colors, you know, like you know how, you know how I am. So I'll probably be doing like some sort of a mix of both of them. I'm not sure what I'm what I'm doing yet. I have no idea. But um yeah, let's go ahead and start. That is healing finally. It's gone. It just it took forever. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. So I thought I would go ahead and start with some more um, products that were over the counter just because I know they're a little bit less expensive and more accessible to people. So I'm going to start my normal routine. So I'm going to go in with Eucerin, my daily living in Vegas is just, it's a lifestyle. Look at that, my face just turned red. From doing that it's crazy crazy I'm gonna let that sit in for just a second I'm gonna go in with milk hydro grip primer all right so I have some Maybelline products that I'm gonna try and I've never 
tried them before. Whatever the most full coverage is, I just need full coverage. So let me show you guys what I bought. For foundation, I have full coverage makeup. It actually has SPF 50 in it, which I really like that. Just wanna try a little bit on the back of my hand to see, that's pretty full coverage. And then I also bought Maybelline, why do I have the same color? That was like a dirter moment. So this is a poreless matte foundation. I've seen a lot of beauty bloggers use this. I've never used it before. Hmm. I actually think this is more full coverage than the other one. So I hope this is my color. So this is 112 foundation. I'm gonna go ahead and use it. I'm gonna try it first with a wet sponge because that's usually how I apply my foundation normally. Pretty medium coverage. I wouldn't call this full coverage. I'd definitely call it medium. So that is, it's definitely not sheer coverage, but it's definitely not full coverage. So I think I'm gonna let this sit for a second, and then I think I'm gonna try one more layer on top. Sometimes, sometimes you can build it. Let's see if it's buildable. Definitely building coverage, which is good. I'm just kind of snobby when it comes to foundation because I'm like a one and done person. Like I just want to do one coat and move on with my life. But for over the counter, this is pretty good coverage. This is about as good as the e.l.f. oil free satin finish. It's pretty good. Always make sure you get your neck and a little bit of your ears so that you don't have that like orange line going. Of course, my I'm so fair. I don't think I would get the wrong color in foundation. So yeah, I actually really like that foundation. So I think this was like $5.97 or something, like really on the low end. So I got two, I have a couple of concealers actually. So I um, I use the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind um, foundation or concealer. This is my other one that I've used a little over halfway full. It's pretty good. It's not like totally, totally full coverage, but it's probably one of the best over-the-counter, close to full coverage concealers that you can get. So the color I have for this Age Rewind is Light Pale and Ivory. So I have those two. I already know that one works though. Um, I also purchased a L'Oreal Full Wear Infallible and then I also have the Super Stay Full Coverage um, Under Eye Concealer from Maybelline. I wanted to try this one. Let's, let's try both of them on the back of the hand to see. So the Maybelline one's a little pink undertones, which I, I'm more olive toned skin because I'm Native American. And the, the L'Oreal is, is brighter for sure. So I actually might try to mix the two. They're both full coverage though. I can see on the back of my hand. So I'm gonna just add and mix both of them right on the skin. This is the, that color by the way that I got was Claritin. And this is L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear in color Ivory 330, so it's a lot brighter. So I'm gonna go in with a wet beauty blender again. But yeah, that's super, super full coverage for sure. Both of them are full coverage. I'm just gonna go down and brighten up the center of my face a little bit. Okay, so for powder, I purchased the Super Stay Full Coverage Powder Foundation. So I've used this a couple of times. I have a darker shade that is color 220 Natural Beige and the lighter shade, which is 110 Porcelain. I'll be using the lighter one. So I've used this a couple of ways. You can A, literally use this as just by itself as like a powder foundation. It's really full coverage too as well. Um, but the way I like to use it is I set it like with a fluffy brush. I'm gonna go through and set this. I always avoid my eyelids when I'm using setting powder because I'm gonna go back in with my P. Louise eyeshadow base. And you don't wanna get too many layers going on, especially with my oily skin. It'll start to like crack and get strange looking. For blush and contour, I'm gonna be boring like always and go in with my ColourPop palette. Okay, first I'm going to do what I always do, which is assess the palettes and decide my color scheme. I kind of always do that to start with. Is it too macabre to go like kind of red? Is it too macabre? Is that too macabre? Do I think I want to do like dark on the outer corner and then like maybe some red in the middle and then like silver on the inner corner and then maybe red underneath to make it like pop.
So H.H. H. Holmes, born May 16th of 1861. Now, interesting, Taurus here. I'm a Taurus, H.H. H. Holmes was a Taurus. I find that really weird because as a Taurus myself, that sounds like a lot of work. Like Tauruses are known for like, they're very determined, they, they like to do, um, you know, what they wanna do, they, they succeed, they're um, bullheaded, right? But the thought of like committing murder is like exhausting to me. So for this guy to be a serial killer, like wow. He was like the least lazy Taurus I've ever known in my life. Another known fact is that H.H. H. Holmes was born in New Hampshire. Hmm, cat? Do you have, um, you know, serial killers being born there or what? I'm trying to decide how to start this look since I'm trying to do something so crazy. I think I'm gonna use some of these grays first on the outer corner and then build it up, I think is what I'm gonna do. Actually, I should probably swatch these first to make sure they're, get, they're gray. See, that was like kind of a brown undertone. Let's try swatching S&M. There's a lot of fallout on this girl, but we're gonna, we're gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna pray to the eye gods. Woo, some fallout. Just wanted to do a little test here to see. Dang, it's going on patchy AF. I'm gonna try it anyway. Maybe my brush is too big. Let's let's blame it on the brush. This could turn into a disaster. <sighs> We're gonna try to make this work. We're really gonna try. 1861, H.H. H. Holmes, he's technically considered the first major serial killer um, in the United States. I mean, that was caught, right? God, that was morbid. Why did I say that? Herman Webster Muggert. What a name. Can you imagine being born with that name, Muggert? No wonder he changed his name to A.J. H. H. Holmes. Like, what is that? So apparently at a very normal, you know, early age, rather than playing with, you know, Tinker Toys or, you know, Lincoln Logs, whatever was available back in the 1860s, rather than being a normal kid, he decided he was really interested in skeletons. And not only skeletons, he had a really weird fascination with death at a very young age. Realistically, you just wanna go back in time with some of these people and be like, what did your parents do to you? Like, what kind of trauma were you carrying around? Like, what actually happened to you as a child that made you so effed up? So this obsession with like skeletons and dead things basically led him to want to pursue an education in medicine. So clearly the kid was smart. He graduated high school at the age of 16. I mean, honestly, if I could go back, I probably would have just to get the hell out of high school. Clearly the kid hated his last name, can't say I blame him, and he decided later on in life to change his name to H.H. H. Holmes, which stood for Henry Howard Holmes. Growing up on the East Coast, he decided to go to um, you know, pursue a career in medicine at a college that was in Vermont. But eventually for medicine, he was accepted into the University of Michigan for med school. It's funny because like some of these serial killers, I feel like we were like, okay, well he had a pretty, like he had an okay upbringing and like, you know, John Wayne Gacy, he like tried to keep it together and just eventually exploded. But no, H.H. H. Holmes was just dark from the get-go. Like the dude just couldn't help himself. So once he got in for med school, um, he started stealing cadavers. Do you know what a cadaver is? A cadaver is basically a dead body that has been donated in some way uh, to science. Uh, some people can can make this choice um, like in a will or whatever. You can make that decision beforehand. So I'm just stamping on the red right now. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna go back through and blend this out probably with maybe like a, like a gray or like a shader brush, something like that. So what was H.H. H. Holmes doing with the cadavers that he was stealing from the med school? What else would you do with a cadaver? Set it on fire. I mean, obviously. That's the obvious thing that you would do with a cadaver. He would not only burn the bodies, but he would disfigure them. Random cadavers would just go missing and he would play weird little experiments on them. Now you guys see why I said I need to sage this one out because this is, this guy was messed up. 
he was kind of smart though like you have to give it to him clearly the dude was smart plus you know you're living in the 1860s medicine hasn't gotten that big by then you know like you can probably get away with a lot more crime at that point because DNA, you know, isn't a thing yet. So after he would steal the bodies, he would plant the bodies in different positions. So like, for example, make them look like they got in some sort of a wreck or like a random injury. But before he would plant the bodies to make them look dead, he would pull out um, life insurance policies on them and he would make money off of these people. He always made it look like the cadavers were in some sort of a random accident. I think I'm gonna go in and shade this out a little bit, and then afterwards I'm gonna go in and uh, probably soften up the edges too. In 1884, H. H. Holmes passed all of his medical um, testing that he needed to do to become an actual doctor. I mean, I think they knew he was gonna pass because he was so smart. Nobody ever caught on to the cadavers, by the way. No one had a clue that that was what was going on. Then when 1885 rolled around, he made the decision to move and leave Michigan, which is where he went to um, do his doctorate degree, and he decided he was going to live in Chicago and practice medicine. That's crazy because these shimmers, they blend like right together. I was worried it was going to be like this super defined sort of look. So in 1885 when he moved to Chicago, he decided to start working as a pharmacist under the alias H.H. H. Holmes. He hadn't actually like legally switched his name yet but um, he was just really embarrassed of his last name. So the owner of the drugstore actually was a man and he ended up passing away. And so once the uh, man passed away, his wife obviously took it over and H.H. H. H. Holmes actually um, convinced her to hand the rein over to him because he was like a doctor um, and was able to run the drugstore without any question. But the like mysterious thing with that is she eventually went missing and they think he was responsible for her going missing. They never found her body or anything, which clearly if he was good at, at you know, burning cadaver bodies, there's probably no problem with hiding that there. So after he became, you know, basically the, the sole owner of the drugstore, um, he ended up finding this empty lot that was across the way from the drugstore. And once again, this is still all happening and unfolding in um, Chicago. I think this time I'm gonna go in with stigmata for the under eye part. Um, I'm going in with a pencil brush, it is a metallic. And I think I'm gonna drag it up to the side like I usually do. So he was obviously making a ton of money by working as a pharmacist across the street. And after he bought this lot of land, he eventually decided he was going to um, create, like by a blueprint, this three-story building that, 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 um, that he was going to live in across the street. That's why I'm using the Kat Von D palette and I have a background that's a castle because the neighbors would actually call it the quote castle because it was the biggest complex in the area. It was literally a brand new three-story building that only a physician or a doctor could afford. It was being like actually constructed and built in 1889, the quote, castle. It was known to um, all of the locals that H.H. H. Holmes was very picky with who was building his castle. And he was constantly seen outside fighting with his construction crew members and firing them constantly. Finally, in 1891, the castle was completed. That was when it started to earn the infamous name Murder Castle. He started to advertise it as somewhat of a hotel sort of vibe, but when he realized people, anyone would stay anywhere, they were really kind of stupid, he realized he could take advantage of the situation. So then H.H. H. Holmes, once he realized he could sort of take advantage of people, uh, much like he did the cadavers, right? Like quite literally. He started putting ads in the newspaper for local young women 
that if they were looking for a job that they could come stay there and basically get lodge in exchange for helping out around the quote castle. He also did other ads where he claimed he was looking for a wife and he was inviting women to stay at the castle to get to know him and possibly become his spouse. But also remember, this, this guy's got a lot of money for back then. So he's probably attracting a lot of women into the area. I'm gonna real quickly use Juvia's Place um, highlighter and this is color, I don't know. I don't know what color this is. It's the lightest one that they have, I know that. So eventually, once he got all of these women into um, the castle, he said that there was only one thing they had to do, which was before they could move in, they had to have life insurance policies. See what I mean? Like he was, he was a con, but he was like smart, like, wow. I'm using some, I have a ton of glitter injections. I just feel like I need to be a little extra today. I'm gonna go in with some glitter injections on top of the highlight. I also have some red glitter here from Glitter Injections. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get crazy. This is dangerous. Ooh, that just kind of like made it pop. It's like all it needed was a little bit of, a little bit of something, something. So this was all of H. H. Holmes' guests, all of his employees, which are the women that he's um, invited to live there, and he was basically calling these multiple women his wives. Um, they weren't legally married, obviously, but it was kind of like a sister-wife situation. Um, everyone that lived there was required to carry a life insurance policy. He also said, I will pay the premiums because I am a doctor, I have money, and I will, I will pay for your life insurance premiums under one circumstance, which is you have to list me as the beneficiary if something happens to you. Isn't that like a red flag? Like, don't be naive, you know what I mean? Like, <sighs> someone told me that, I'd be like, you're trying to kill me, ho, so I'm gonna step on out. So this is when most of his fiancés and wives would just suddenly disappear. Then the guests started to disappear. Then the employees started to disappear. And now we're starting to catch on to something that's going on here. A lot of people like in the neighborhood, the neighbors would say they would see the women enter into the castle, but they wouldn't see them exit the castle. Now in 1893, this is in Chicago, two years after it's been built, the city of Chicago and state of Illinois is obviously so impressed with, contributed to the city, including building this amazing slot of land, you know, this huge castle that people have never seen before. People are just in awe of him as a person. So the state comes to him and says, we would like for you to host the next world fair. It's the 400th event or whatever, and we want you to be like a huge part of this. Well, of course, in H.H. H. Holmes' eyes, he's thinking, think of all the people that I'll have access to to murder. So the event was from May until October. That's a long event. And with that event, sorry, Theo just jumped on me and it scared me. With that event, it was going to be attracting possibly millions of people to Chicago. He knew that the people would be searching for lodging and he knew it was his perfect prime opportunity to get people to stay at his death lair. Now, when you're saying creeps and cosmetics, this dude's a creep. Like this dude's just a straight up creep. Like he is a predator, predator. Most of the out of town guests would enter, but they would never be seen again once this world fair started. So the first floor of the castle had several retail establishments and that was basically, um, you know, to pretend like it looked normal. I would assume if you imagine kind of like Vegas, like it had like a Vegas vibe to it, except, um, so they wanted it to look like, you know, a mall or retail when you walked in. Now the upper two levels had over a hundred rooms, so he could house a lot of people here in one place. Now, the creepier part of this is the, um, there were living quarter areas too where they could like make food or like living rooms, but all of the rooms had been built soundproof. That's sketchy. There were also gas lines that were running into each room. And this was so that he could either cause his victims to pass out or he would go in and asphyxiate them by hand and make it so no one could hear their screams straight up creep, like straight up, he's a creep. 
He also had trap doors throughout the entire building leading out of each room so that if someone died, he would just sneak their body out the trap door and suddenly that room was available again. He was also known for uh, putting in peepholes in all of the rooms so he would spy on his guests and whatever they were doing. Once again, what a creep. Now there was a basement for H.H. Holmes but the basement was only accessible by him. So no one had really known what was down there, but basically he had set it up like a lab, kind of like like a, a mouse in like rat rat lab, except it was for like his own human experiments on these people. He had a dissecting rack, a stretching table, and a crematorium down there. So he could literally just make you completely disappear. It was also found out that later that he had a body shoot <laughs> Instead of a trash chute, it was a body chute. So whenever he was like done with the bodies from like the upper level, he would just shoot the body down the chute and it would drop them directly into the basement. So he had pre-planned this whole thing out. Like he had really thought this whole thing out. So the creepier part about this is he would, he would dissect the bodies and like do weird creepy things, dismemberments. And sometimes if he was running low on money, he would strip the skeletons down to nothing. So he'd take like the flesh and bone and like muscle off and sell the skeletons to medical schools. How come no one was paying attention to this? Like, cause it was 1860 and it's just crazy. It was known like all over the United States that H.H. H. Holmes had been just committing insurance fraud all over the place. So obviously the World Fair brought him a lot of money, but he needed more money after that. And so after that, he just continued his scamming, just continued the scamming of like insurance policies and killing random people just to keep money coming in. Out of nowhere, he decides to go to Texas because like there's just having their economy issues here in Chicago. And he starts selling horses to people in St. Louis. That is what he ended up getting arrested for. Um, and he was put in jail for like swindling and for making like illegal deals. Like you would think he would have stopped or like something, but no, like he had to keep going because he, he said he needed money for his lawyers. So he ended up um, convincing his cellmate that um, he should get a like $10,000 insurance policy out and put H.H. Holmes name on it and fake their death, like he'll fake his death. And um, once they realize like it was fake that he'll like get the money and they'll split it. So when H.H. H. Holmes got actually released from jail, they did try this scam, but this is when the insurance company started to like check into like, there's something fishy going on here. So in 1894, his um, cellmate is still sitting there in prison and he's starting to get really angry because he has been waiting on that money from the policy from H.H. H. Holmes and he hasn't gotten the money and he doesn't understand where it is and so now he's mad. So he decides he's gonna tell the police about the scam that H.H. H. Holmes um, got him in on because he's mad at him. He wants him to get busted for it. I love when your lash just, just like goes on, man. You know, like just, it's like work with me here, boo. While the police are tracking down Holmes for, you know, the scam that went on with his cellmate. In the meantime, H.H. H. Holmes is trying to get the payout from this insurance policy for the cellmate, but the insurance company caught on and wouldn't give him the money. So he decides he's gonna do something similar with somebody else. He convinces somebody else to get an insurance policy out, says, you know, let's fake your death, um, get the insurance and I'll split the money with you. Except this time, H.H. H. Holmes ended up killing the guy. Of course he did, because that was what he was good at. Now by this time, the police are starting to catch up to his trail. And they're trying to track him, and they're trying to track him and they just can't seem to track him yet. I have one lash that went on perfectly and the other lash is basically giving me a huge middle finger. I also completely like ripped off, well not ripped, but peeled off my eyeliner on this side, so I'm gonna have to redo it. It's the thing with makeup, guys, is like it's, everything's fixable, seriously. So in Boston, police finally caught up to H.H. H. Holmes. They'd been chasing him around for months, um, trying to get him for, uh, you know, fraud and like taking out the fraudulent life insurance policy on his cellmate. So when they were finally able to catch him, they just couldn't believe it. He was so hard to catch. So not only was he arrested in Boston for an outstanding warrant in Texas, 
but the police became very suspicious of him because at the time they arrested him, they said he looked like he was getting ready to flee the country, like he was gonna leave the United States completely. And that was where his whole little like dysfunctional plan started to slowly crash. Police became suspicious. They went to his castle that was located in Chicago and that was when they realized he had been torturing victims for years. The crazy part was they did end up finding some of the bodies, but what was left was so badly dismembered, they couldn't even be identified. They thought it was just women that were involved, but eventually they found bodies and dismembered pieces of children. Um, there was a huge, like a, a number of children that had gone missing and they found out that H.H. H. Holmes was responsible for that. So that's really sick, you know, like, not that dismembering and, and destroying adults is bad, but you're doing that to children. There's something not right. And he had taken out insurance policies on these kids as well. He confessed to 28 murders, however, with the pieces that were left of the different bodies. They think that he was responsible for possibly 200, if not more. In 1896, H.H. H. Holmes was tried and hanged for, uh, you know, the murders and dismemberment of 28 people. The Holmes Horror Castle was then purchased later and it was completely reconstructed to draw people that were fans of the macabre, but someone uh, came by and burned it to the ground before the establishment could be opened, so it no longer exists to this day. However, the land does. So this is a berry lip pin. I think this is something from a collection I was thinking about buying. I don't always use lip liner, but sometimes I do. No, Milani, I'm going with Milani. I am invincible, which is black. And then I'm gonna add like a black gloss over the top of it. You can use honestly like a black eyeliner if you want to line your lips without like buying the actual lip liner. It's the same kind of product. So I'm blending the berry in with the black. This is honestly the best matte lip I can find on the market. It's Milani I Am Invincible. It's the best. And last but not least, we need some setting spray. I think something is missing. Thank God I was a 90s kid and I got to grow up with goosebumps because that was just one more thing that <sighs> made me who I am today. Part of my video cut out again because I always have some part of my video cut out when I do creeps and cosmetics. But what I wanted to fill you guys in on was there is a great great grandson of H.H. H. Holmes and his name is Jeff Mudgett. He's actually written a book about his grandfather as well. In 2017, Jeff had his grandfather's or supposed grandfather's remains um, brought back up to the surface. Um, he was excavated and compared his DNA and his DNA was not a 100% match. So what that means is because of the timeline, which was about 1888, right in there, they believe that H.H. H. Holmes either traded spots with another inmate because he was very conniving and very smart and someone else was hung. And they believe that H.H. H. Holmes escaped and went to Europe and that was who was Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper was known to, you know, abduct prostitutes and do very like high-tech surgical procedures on them and Jack the Ripper was never caught. So it is assumed that H.H. H. Holmes could be Jack the Ripper. I guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. So this is an ending to um, a very interesting plot. This Jeff guy who is the grandson has pretty much dedicated his entire life to researching his grandfather. Look him up. So that is the look for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed talking about H.H. H. Holmes. What a like fraud, what a creep. Like he didn't have any respect for human life. And um, it is really, really interesting to hear his story. England, the Jack the Ripper murder started and nobody was held accountable for that. And they did know that he was trying to flee the United States after what he'd done. So they believe it could be possible that he was not hung, he escaped, and he he was doing the crazy things he was doing as Jack the Ripper because 
It's claimed that whoever was doing the Jack the Ripper mur murders was some sort of a doctor. The timeline with H.H. Holmes lines up perfectly. In 1885 is when the um, castle was burned to the ground. 1938, it was actually torn down because there was nothing left of it and it was a hazard. And what occupies that site now is a US post office, but that place is haunted. Please make sure you guys give my video a thumbs up and give me spooky comments below. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please share my video with your social media to try to help build, rebuild this channel. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. H.H. Holmes is a creep, yo. It's a creep.